Avast! I'm JC from One Shot Adventures, and today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite RPG genres, swashbuckling pirate action. If you're looking to run a pirate adventure in whatever your favorite game system is, or you just want to add swashbuckling elements into an existing campaign, get to the stern of the ship, and I'll be there in a minute to give you my top five tips on how to run a great pirate adventure. All right, let's talk about pirate RPGs. Now, when I say pirate, I mean any genre that has a lot of swashbuckling, daring do, and high adventure. Today, I'll mostly talk about Golden Age pirates, but you can easily steal these suggestions and use them for your favorite fantasy or science fiction setting to make it have the feel of the swashbuckling era. Before I dive into my top tips for a great pirate adventure, let's first talk about how pirate adventures are different from standard fantasy adventures. In a lot of ways, both genres are a lot alike. They all have kings and queens, opportunities for exploration, lots of gold and treasure, and sword fights all over the place. And honestly, a lot of times I've played a pirate adventure, it just feels like a fantasy adventure in different costuming. But if you're watching this video, that's not what you want. You want an authentic swashbuckling feel for your adventures, not just another fantasy game where everyone's running around in rapiers. So here we go on the top tips. First tip, the PCs have to be underdogs. A key difference between the fantasy genre and the pirate genre comes down to status. The real age of piracy was a time of massive status differences between people. Pirates were at the lowest end of the scale, which meant that the world was against them. They always were outgunned, desperate, and always looked down upon too. So in a pirate game, your heroes have to be underdogs. If the world paid attention to them, they wouldn't last a second. But the world doesn't pay attention to your players. They operate on the borders of society. This is really important to capture because in a typical fantasy game, the starting hero of Dungeons and Dragons is braver, stronger, and way more capable than the average person. If this is the case, your game just won't feel like pirates. Now, this doesn't mean that noble characters can't belong in a pirate game, but they're usually expelled from their families or being influenced by people far more powerful than they are. Even the Three Musketeers had to deal with a king and an evil cardinal, both of whom were way more powerful than they were, so they were still underdogs. So as a GM, you have to constantly play up the underdog status of your heroes. You need to build this into the adventure with NPCs that look down on them, nobles who ignore them, and soldiers who could probably kill them if they even mattered to them. And because the PCs are at the bottom of the food chain, they'll hesitate to pull out their swords to deal with their problems and just kill people. And that leads me into my second tip. Tip number two, violence has to be outweighed by cleverness. So once your low status PCs realize that they have to be careful because the world looks down on them and is far more powerful than they are, they're gonna start hesitating to resort to violence as an option. If they're too quick to pull out their swords and guns, they'll likely get beaten up, arrested, and hung for villainy. So your players, when they realize this, will naturally start to use their wits more. Now, in a great pirate game, parlay is as effective as melee. Swashbucklers almost always use their words before their swords, and in an RPG, this is because the consequences of low-life underdog heroes resorting to violence has to be very high. So you, as a game master, have to enforce the penalty for careless violence, so your players will think twice before initiating it. You can do this in a lot of different ways. You can always use tough guards with halberds and muskets, always watching at the perimeter of where the PCs are. Or the governor is known for exiling violent lowlifes from his island, and the first time they do something wrong, they're just kicked off and thrown into the ocean. No! Or bounties go out in everybody's heads right away because they scarred some nobleman's face in a duel. You have to be tough with the consequences for wanton violence in a pirate adventure, especially early in the campaign to set those expectations so your players start using their cleverness. And cleverness, well, that's a very piratey thing. Tip number three, give your PCs a patron. You know how in Dungeons and Dragons, like the town elders are always looking for random people in their village to go save the day? Hail strangers, I have no idea who you are, but you look stronger and more capable than anyone in my kingdom. So I'm hoping that you wouldn't mind 
killing a five-headed acid-breathing dragon on my behalf, please. Well, that doesn't really happen in a pirate adventure because the PCs are nobodies. Pirate adventures tend to be a little bit more subtle than fantasy adventures. There's rarely villages to be saved or monsters to be slain or dungeons to be explored. And because the PCs are underdogs, then important people are less likely to just pick them out and send them to do important things. Without these obvious hooks, it's harder to kick off a good pirate adventure. So the solution to this is to give the PCs a patron at the very beginning of the campaign. A patron is a powerful NPC who has a reason for keeping the PCs busy all the time, and he trusts them to do very special things. For example, instead of letting the PCs captain their own ship at the beginning of a game, make the captain an NPC who calls the shots. Or maybe the PCs are childhood friends with the governor of the island or are mentoring under an older musketeer. Once you have a patron to drive the adventures, it's easier to send the PCs on dangerous missions, and you can use that patron later on to do really interesting things with your narrative. Maybe the patron gets captured, or turns traitor, or vanishes mysteriously. Patrons are really the best narrative tool to kickstart pirate adventures. Tip number four, make it insulting. One of the hallmarks of the pirate genre are the insults and the verbal sparring, but the typical game master just isn't going to be good at these like witty retorts and barbs like they do in the movies. Your princess bride quotes will only take you so far in a pirate adventure. My trick for this was I printed out a sheet of about a hundred or so period insults, and I folded it into my adventure and I kept it secret from my players. And so when the time was right and I needed one of those insults, I just glanced there and I just whipped out a really good, clever response to whatever they said. Talking to you is like stepping on a leaf in autumn with no crunch. Sheer disappointment. <laughs> Your brain is about as dry as a biscuit after voyage. Well, to that I say, a learned fool is more of a fool than an ignorant fool. I would beat thee, but my hands would smell like you afterwards. It made it easy to bring locutionary excellence into my world, and it always got a good laugh from my players. Eventually, my players figured out what I was doing, and they actually started to do the same thing. And the sessions just took on this fun, authentic feel of language and insults and verbal sparring that we never had in any of our adventures before. So go find some good insults, print them out, and go watch your players' faces when you start to use them. Tip number five. Villains should be rivals before they are foes. One of the other ways that swashbuckling adventures differ from fantasy ones is that there's just not supervillains. In fantasy, you get evil necromancers and monsters and all kinds of crazy bad guys. But in pirate adventures, the villains typically start out as rivals or just people that are sort of jerks to the PCs by circumstance, and then they develop into actual villains. A rival doesn't ever try to kill his opponents at first. They're usually trying to compete with them. Maybe they're trying to beat them to an objective or outmatch them or embarrass them somehow. Eventually, rivals can become mustache twirling evil people who have dark and evil plans, but don't start them out that way in a pirate adventure. This lets your PCs spend time with these bad guys and get to know them and develop a competitive relationship, and then you can have them go crazy and turn into a necromancer or whatever you want to do. It's just much more satisfying to have a villain in a pirate adventure that you can talk to before you try to kill them later. A good example of this is in a pirate adventure I ran where the entire premise of the adventure was that some mysterious person was hanging all of these lewd pictures of the PCs all over town. They were like drawing these horrible illustrations of them doing these really foul things and the PCs were really embarrassed and angry about this. So, the entire adventure was, of course, about the players trying to track this person down, this villain who was doing this to them. And what was interesting is when they got to the end of the adventure and they finally met the villain, they actually had no desire to kill him. They just wanted to know why he was doing this to them and what his motivation was and what they did to deserve this. And the conclusion turned out to be more of this like epic angry fight between them than just you know pulling out swords and impaling each other. So I encourage you to come up with bad guys that can kind of start this way and then maybe evolve into something more threatening later. Tip number Hold six. Hold there, you cackle-fruited lick splitter. You said you'd be doing five tips today, and now you'll be sharing a sixth. Are you just giving our treasure away for free today? 
It, it's a bonus tip. It's, a, it's fine. It's a, it's a bonus tip. Building counters out of set pieces. Everyone knows that swashbuckling movies have tons of daring do in them. Chandeliers are swung on and balconies are leapt down and sailors grab these knives and do that thing with them and slide down the sails. You know, they go, I don't know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. RPGs generally don't handle this narrative motion very well. Dungeons and Dragons just abstracts it all to, you have advantage. And systems like GURPS, which has second by second combat, really makes it hard to get anything done that might be athletically ridiculous. Other systems have things like drama points, where players can spend to change the, the setting to their liking, but I found that players don't usually use that unless they're naturally the creative narrative types themselves, so it's wasted on a lot of players. Forget all those game mechanics just for a second. The way to encourage daring do in your pirate adventures is to build your combat encounters so that they always have multiple goals and they always take place in interesting settings. No fight should be on open ground, and no fight should have a single objective. A good example of this is in The Siren's Citadel, a free pirate adventure that you can download at OneShotAdventures.com. In one of its earliest encounters, the PCs are sent to go rescue a hostage from a sugar mill. But when they arrive, the sugar mill's on fire, and the guards are all running around like crazy, not sure what to do. The hostage is burning to death inside, and there's this mysterious nobleman riding around on a horse, blindfolded and running around like crazy, and nobody even knows what he's doing. So now, instead of just being a simple combat encounter between PCs and guards, there's a lot of choices to be made in terms of what to do here. So when my players faced this kind of encounter, they immediately just split up. One of the players dashed inside the building and go save the hostage. Two other players circled around to fight with the guards and lure them away. And the last player, well, he just hopped on his horse and chased after this noble trying to figure out what was going on with this guy. And was he a friend or was he a foe? And it, the chaos just made it play out a lot more like one of those cinematic swashbuckling pirate scenes from the movies. This plate spinning approach to encounter design also helps to solve a potential problem that exists in the pirate genre. Pirate games don't have a strong character separation like fantasy games do. In fantasy games, you have archetypes or character classes that have very different powers. Like some can fight, some can cast spells, others can heal, some can do area damage, that sort of thing. This mechanical separation that exists in fantasy games helps to give every player a moment to shine. But in pirate adventures, there's just not as many mechanical difference between the characters. It's just the nature of the genre. You generally have a swordsman, and maybe a rogue, and maybe even a charismatic noble type, but that's kind of it. So for players to feel special and different from each other, you can't rely on what's on their character sheet. But if you listen to my advice and you design chaotic encounters that force players to plate spin and split up and think about different objectives, every player still gets a moment to shine in your adventure. So. In a great pirate game, it's your adventure's job to help players shine, not the character sheet's job to do it. Well, that's it for my top tips on how to run a great pirate adventure. I hope it's helpful. And if you found some great pirate adventures, I'd love to know what they are, because I generally find that the pirate adventures I read do read more like fantasy adventures with different costumes. So if you found a great one that has a great swashbuckling feel, let me know. I'd love to check it out. And if you found this video helpful and want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget, you can download a copy of The Siren Citadel, that free pirate adventure, for both 5th edition and GURPS on OneShotAdventures.com. It also includes pre-generated characters and VTT assets, so you can just grab your friends and play without a lot of prep work. Until next time, I'm JC, and may our ships cross paths again soon. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was the Bully Hutty. The winds blew hard, her bow dipped down, oh blow me, Billy boys blow. Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go.